I was talking with my new genius friend, Zero K, and some news came out that a pro player got a match overturned for accidentally having snap tap enabled. When Zero sent me this screenshot of him using it for multiple games without being detected until one day he was found out. His match was overturned, leading Heroic to forfeit their map win. This got me thinking, how many other pros have been using snap tap for months now and haven't gotten spotted by admins? Before I show you this list, Know that I do not think these players are trying to cheat the system and abuse the fact that Valve has seemingly not told tournament organizers to turn these settings that auto-kick you on. If these systems were on, I would assume that these players would have been reminded that they were for whatever reason enabled, and they would be forced to turn them off. I think that it's because they don't want false positives in their games, as players like Bit seem to have insane overlap statistics, but more on this later. And having someone be kicked for this when the point of the command is to stop abusers would be really funny in an important stage game. The important thing to remember is that what matters is a drastic change in your behavior, like going from multiple hundreds of bad strafes to straight zeros back to back to back, like Frozen and Tessas both do right here. I went ahead and downloaded every demo from August 18th until now with over a one-star rating on HLTV, so all the pro-level games, so there's no Mickey Mouse players here. You know, putting this video out might get my apartment bombed, but don't worry, I'm moving in about a week, so you can firebomb my apartment after I move, thanks. As you can see, many players have been using some form of null binds, whether that be snap tap, snappy tappy, or a script, and it seems as if tournament organizers hadn't gotten the memo to turn these commands on to what Valve's detection methods are. So here on screen are the values that Valve uses to try to avoid false positives, but also always kick perma nullers. While the ESL and Blast admins take a look at these values and write them down for the quiz at the end of the period, Speaking of ESL, here's a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. Skin Club is the best adult case opening site on the internet. Skin Club lets you open cases for real cash with my promo code in the description. Aren't happy with what you got out of a case? Skin Club lets you write it along into an upgrader so you can get your value back with just a little bit of luck. You can deposit easily with all the methods that you see on screen with easy withdrawals. You can also battle against other players or split the difference so that everybody wins. Head on over to Skin Club with my link in the video description for a deposit bonus. Thank you to Skin Club for sponsoring today's video. Here's how two players, 0k and Gosh, found these commands to be what Valve uses. In this Google Sheet, you can see their testing strategy, which I'll link below. They had to sit in deathmatch servers at 2am to get Valve settings and continuously test how fast they were kicked in order to dial it in to match their settings. Zero told me that they tried making eight alt accounts to private queue as well, and even went on Faceit 1v1 servers to see if their convars were updated, but they weren't. If I'm wrong about this with Faceit, please let me know. I can't say for certain if you'll get kicked in the same way on Faceit servers as you do on Valve servers, but it seems like they aren't auto-kicking people, just manually overturning league matches if a suspected player is nulling. But your mileage may vary on this one, so don't use them. The first commands I want to look at are very simple. SV auto C strafe logging zero and SV auto C strafe kick false. And I'll just be saying the last part for the rest of the video. The latter command is pretty self-explanatory. It just enables kicking or not. The first command shows an output of your strafes in the console, which if you enable logging to, you can see every strafe of your client no matter if it's nulled or not. One shows when automation is detected, but if you'd like to see how good you are, enable two in an offline server and see if you can get most of your strafes around the zero overlap mark. I have notoriously horrible overlap, but some players are extremely good like Bit and have really good strafes. You might be asking what underlap is. Underlap is when you press a key and have a gap between pressing the next. It's the opposite of overlap, which some players actually do, which is why I believe that Bit has such insane overlap statistics because I bet if it were easier to parse for underlap in demos, we'd see that he has a much higher underlap than other pro players who primarily have overlap tendencies. It seems that underlap is much less common, but people still do it. All right, so the other commands are way more complicated, and I hope this graphic explains what the system's actually doing. I'm gonna refer to overlap and underlap strafes as bad and nulled strafes as nulled strafes. These set values on official servers were most likely decided after ramping the kick rate up super high and collecting data on kicks in order to tune it down and dial it in to avoid some false positives. Even with this system, false positives can still happen, and I hope you understand why after hearing this explanation. When you first join a server, the game starts noting your counter strafe attempts. Valve has this in their notes on SV auto C strafe min attempts to where the player must be moving more than 135.2 units per second for their counter strafe to be considered an attempt. The server notes the first 50 of your attempts in the minimum attempts before it considers you for kicking. 50 is a set value by Valve. This is to avoid kicking someone at the start of the game for something silly. This value could have been zero, but you'll see here in a bit why that would have been a problem when we talk about the rolling window. After 50 attempts, 
the game now starts to check if you have surpassed the quote unquote success threshold, which is set to 18 nulled strafes in a row. Now the game is checking to see if you've hit this number. And if you do, it flags you as a candidate for being kicked, but does not kick you yet. Next, let's think about your history. The attempt window is the number of attempts that the server will remember before deleting it, as the game does not want to store the entire match's history since we only care about when you turn it on or off. This value is set to 100. Next, let's talk about the rolling window. The sequence length window of 20 is a rolling check to try to find a sequence that you have at least 18 strafes inside of 20 which is the set success threshold. If you have 18 strafes in this window, now the game checks the last 100 strafes to see if you meet a final criteria. The criteria are the lower and upper overlap percent thresholds, which look to see if you have had less than 4 to 6% bad strafes in the last 100 based on an interpolation function. Here's what the game is doing behind the scenes. You can see the code on screen, but we can simplify this down with our CVAR values to look like this. If we fill in success threshold, sequence length, and the lower and upper bounds. If you don't know what the lerp function does, it's a function in C++ that does this. So if maximum num perfect in sequence equals 20, 20 minus 18 over 20 minus 18 equals one, and therefore overlap threshold is equal to four plus one times six minus four, which is equal to 6% exactly. If your max number in the window was 19, 19 minus 18 over two is a half, so your threshold is four plus 0.5 times 2, which is 5%. So what this means is that the game is storing a value called overlap threshold, which is the value that's used to actually kick you. So with this, you can get away with doing 20 perfect strafes that are null-like, meaning you have zero overlap and underlap 20 times in a row. But if the game doesn't see you as a habitual user over the last 100 strafes, you won't be kicked. That's the whole point. So here's an example. If you did two bad strafes after joining the server, then 98 nulls, you would have 20 out of 20 as the maximum best sequence in the window of 100. So if we do 20 minus 18 over 2, we get 1. So 4 plus 1 times 6 minus 4 is 6, otherwise known as 6%. And since you did 2 out of the 100 strafes legit, your real value is 2%. 2 over 100 is 0 0.02 times 100 is 2%. So you would get kicked. Now, if you do 2 bad strafes, then 18 nulled, then 2 bad strafes and 18 nulled over and over until we hit 100, you will have done 18 strafes as your max perfect number of nulled strafes in the sequence. So we do 18 minus 18 over 2 is 0, and lerp gives us 4%. If we look at how many strafes were bad in the window of the last 100, we'd have 10 in that window, so 10% bad strafes. You would not get kicked for this, since your quota is to get kicked for anything under 4%. But it's very hard to keep this up unless you have an advanced script that's also looking for your counter strafes and actively monitoring your overlap inputs to prevent this, which would require some kind of DLL injection into your game or a super complicated config, which most people aren't gonna fuck around with, right? What this also means is that you can get around Valve's system by doing 17 perfect null strafes and one bad strafe repeatedly over and over, and you'll never even get flagged in the first place or you could just not cheat. That's a crazy idea. Okay, that was extremely confusing, but hopefully you understand why this system works the way it does, as it's trying its best to avoid false positives while also kicking people who are blatantly nulling. And I think it's a good trade-off and Valve did a nice job with this implementation. What this also means is that server owners, particularly Surf and KZ owners when those come back in full force soon, can tweak these values more easily since now they're understood to prevent nulls from happening without the need for a plugin which was previously needed in other Source 1 games, but now it's much harder in Source 2 with the struggles that developers are going through right now. This took Zero and Gosh four days of pure, long-hour testing days to figure out how it all worked in Valve servers, and it's all because Valve didn't post their server CFG files anywhere for people to download. I expect that in the future, or right after a Valve dev sees this video, they'll post their full server CFG file or any CVARs that they adjust, as all we need is the set of config values to copy that Valve uses for our own servers. Valve, please update your GitHub.